Welcome to Copacabana and Lake Titicaca, the highest freshwater lake in the entire world at 3,800 meters altitude, sandwiched in the Andes mountains between Peru and Bolivia. And it is a beautiful spot. We're gonna take you through the full 24 hours itinerary, the top sunset, maybe I've seen it in my entire life. One of the best accommodations me and Emma stayed at in our entire seven months traveling so far and some great, great people. If you enjoy what you see, if you've got any questions, bang it in the comments down below. Whilst you're down there, hit that subscribe button, still on route to 3k subs and let's get straight into it so accommodation wise this place is absolutely sensational hotel las olas it's like being in a little smurf house it's like being in hobbiton itself it is unbelievable we're paying 25 pounds um, each per night to stay here so obviously you know i mean we are the bougie backpackers it's not super budget friendly but it is unbelievable you've got jaw-dropping views of you know I mean? all the water, the lake in the distance. You can see that from your little balcony, your little garden out front. You can see that when you're sat in bed and you can see that when you're sat inside uh, on the little chairs um, as well. Lovely little kitchen area. There isn't a fridge, which is one of the things that me and Em said is a little bit interesting. It's, it's like you have unbelievable kitchen, all the utensils you need, uh, but yeah, there's no fridge and stuff. So we've been whipping up a few hot chocolates um, and stuff like that. And you have a lovely little mezzanine. It takes you upstairs. Um, and then while you're sat in bed, again, you've got the jaw dropping views um, of the water in the distance so yeah well well worth it but the craziest part for me is there are just free roaming alpacas um, that are just flying about the place so you'll just be sat here uh, and literally open the door and four alpacas were just like staring us straight in the face so if that's something that you're into something a bit quirky something a bit different i would say this is definitely the spot for you very much like an instagram type place i posted a few um videos and pictures on my story and if you've not seen them already it means one thing and one thing only you know follow me on instagram gareth right to get it on the list so yeah silly views of the sea lovely little setup um and yeah can hide Highly, highly recommend it's just set back a little bit from the center um uh, of obviously Copacabana um, which I think is just a little bit nice just a little bit more quaint very much gives me like Positano Italy type vibes look, look, looking over into the sea itself so yeah absolutely top draw and the other highlight for me um, is Cerro Cavallo um, it is the, the mountain or I guess hill that overlooks um, the whole of Copacabana we're on that side of town so I'd probably say if you're on the far side of town it's about a 20 minute walk to the base of it um, and I, I, I'd say I'm pretty fit um, and it is a 15, 20 minutes, brutal climb. I'm not even joking. I reckon my heart rate was like zone five, 180, 190 beats per minute. It was absolute carnage. It's a beautiful little spot. Um, for a sunset um but do do just bear that in mind you want to be there i'd say 45 minutes before sunset the sunset's just behind some mountains and they do have some low level cloud here um so obviously to get the full effect i'd say at least 45 minutes before i probably got there about an hour and a quarter before um and to get a good spot as well once you're climbing up there you might need a few stops i powered through all the way to the top in 15 20 minutes but was dying definitely needed the rest recovery recuperation to uh, to get back in the zone and then you've got 360 degree views um when you get up there uh, big catholic monuments so do you know I mean if you are religious it's going to be an added bonus to yourself um places to buy drinks soft drinks beer waris um all that sort of stuff it does get fairly busy um because it's kind of like a viewing platform um so if you do want the best spot or one of the best spots get there well 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 in advance um i got the drone up as you've seen beautiful footage lovely viewpoint all the way around um, but there was like um like a hawk um, or something or a bird of prey i'm pretty sure i looked it was like a hawk or an eagle one of the two either way it would have absolutely had its way with the old drone so yeah i got a few shots and then after that i was like no nah, i need to take this in um Otherwise, it's going to get taken down. There were loads of people boozing up there, which I thought for the severity of the climb, not just getting up there, but also getting down was pretty loose. And there was a lot of plastic, to be fair, and a bit of rubbish. So again, just a slight taint um, in how good it was. The, the main street in the center, Avenue de Gusto, I've definitely pronounced that wrong. I'll just overlay it now. There's one street. It runs from like a really, really nice church at like the middle of town. Um, beautiful building and even more beautiful inside. I didn't take any pictures inside because I don't think you're meant to slash you're allowed but yeah probably one of the nicest churches that i've been into and do you know what i mean for someone that's been in the uh in the vatican um in the cathedrals there do you know what i mean that should speak a lot of the do you know what i mean the architecture and um all the stuff in there so yeah from there straight down to the waterfront um is the main street every shop i'd say 
there's three kind of shops. There is a supermarket, uh, which is just selling like drinks, as you can imagine. Say supermarket, it's like a mini mart, a corner shop. Um, there's a place he's selling like tours to go to, um, uh, go on Lake Titicaca to uh, Isla del Sol, which I mean, there's gonna be a separate vlog on that already recorded and will be on the channel after this one. Unbelievable there, by the way, definitely check that out. Um, and then the other shop is just selling like, a mixture of like souvenirs slash I find myself in Bolivia uh, jumpers is the one I'm calling them. The one that's like, a, looks like a poncho, but it's like, a, uh, yeah, keeps you nice and warm. So they're the kind of three shops. Again, there's not a whole host of things to see there. Very, very similar um, on all those. I personally, not shoot i think this place is absolutely beautiful the place we're staying uh, now going up to the viewpoint getting out on the water is absolutely magnificent but for me i actually think the the waterfront um at copacabana isn't that nice it actually smells pretty bad to be 100 percent honest with you Def definitely reminded me of some of the some of the places in changi where you're walking you see that big whiff or waft of uh yeah sewage or something so yeah the waterfront a little bit gimmicky loads of kind of like sport like water sports type stuff like people taking around in like rubber dinghies which for me is a very different vibe to the rest of Bolivia and what we've experienced. So that would only be one slight negative, but yeah, the 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 setting where we are now, a little bit up on the cliffs, is um is unbelievable. Um, in terms of getting here, because um, that's probably going to be the the main thing to think about, is that you're going to need to get a bus, which is either going to uh, come from La Paz, where we came from, um, or you can come from other areas within. Um, uh, yeah, with, within Bolivia itself. So if you are coming from La Paz, it's about, it says three hours, um, but it is actually four hours to be fair. So yeah, just something um, to bear in mind. Um, it could set us back, you know, like 20 quid, something like that. So yeah, insane value. Would highly, highly, highly recommend doing that. Um, and then one of the funniest things, you get like, 75% of the way there and you've got a cross from uh, like across like a like the lake itself there's no kind of like land uh, border to go across there which there is on the Peruvian side but not on the Bolivian side um, and I've never seen this before in my entire life so the boat you get off your your minibus and you get on a like a small little boat and then the uh, the, the big um, like minibus the big van that you're in goes on um a separate <laughs> separate barge so all our stuff all our suitcases are just on this little wooden barge type thing um which is yeah pretty pretty mad to be fair but yeah super cool experience um is a little bit longer uh, than we initially um thought on that front but yeah super super top draw um would highly recommend <laughs> that um and yeah, if you want the best views while you're traveling, sit on the right hand side um, of the bus. So when you get onto a uh, Copacabana, obviously, as I just said, then all the nice views are on the right hand side, but it's literally like jaw, not even jaw dropping. Like I'm talking like the cliff just drops off the, just drops off the edge. So if you are a little bit cautious, a little bit more worried like myself, sit on the left hand side. If you want the best views, sit on the right hand side. So yeah, just a few little bits of intel, a few little bits of the old knowledge. So for me, Bolivia as a whole has been absolutely phenomenal. I've actually put it as my favorite country. I've been to 75 different countries. This is taking P1. I had Japan and Australia joint at that. And it's hard to compare Bolivia to Japan, Japan to Australia. They're very, very different experiences. So we can maybe put them all on the same level. But I think for me, the people, the food's been great. Um, if, you've, if you're coming here and you're checking this out and thinking, oh, we're also going to go to the salt flats, I have four videos live on the salt flats. One, which is like a travel guide, which is all like the very detailed information of like the price, the cost, logistics, how to get there, um, and my personal highlights. And I've got three separate vlogs on the three uh, days that we did on the trip so they're a bit more bit more casual bit more uh, thoughts in the moments but yeah absolutely amazing go back watch those check those out and then i said we went to isadel sol yesterday um there'll be a vlog going on the channel after this one covering that but yeah unbelievable country absolutely loved it thus far i'm just going to give you a little spin around on this front but yeah check the views out one more time so we're staying in these little uh hobbiton holes here and it's just unbelievable scenery. I think being up here is just a slight bit set back from the center of Copacabana, which have been absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna finish off because I've just seen the fellas as we kind of walk around this way. But yeah, as I say, so we're in um, this hotel, Hotel Hostel del Solas. Unbelievable setup as again, best place we've stayed the whole time. And then you just have these fellas. <laughs> So yeah, ridiculous scenes I would highly recommend. For me, everything about this country, the people, 
places we've stayed, the experiences we've had. Number day one of our trip in the Salt Flats, I generally put down as the single best day in my entire life. So yeah, definitely get it on the list. I need to work out how to stop doing that with the old uh, Osmo Pocket. It's doing the bloody mirroring. Who knows? If you do know how to sort that, please let me know because I've watched about a million tutorials online. If you've got any questions, Copacabana, Is it El Sol, Salt Flats, etc. bang it down in the old comments. I respond to every single message. Whilst you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Still en route to 3K subs. I'll see you in the next one, baby. We're moving on to Peru. The content is coming thick and fast. And remember, the chef is always cooking. Let's get it.